This video was generated from a prompt using the World Foundation model. I'll be going over physical AI, World Foundation models, and Cosmos. Let's dive in. If you're new to my channel, I have a website at kevinwoodrobotics.com where I have a bunch of resources on robotics and computer vision. So check it out and subscribe to learn more. First, let's define what physical AI is. So the physical part of physical AI represents something that has actuators and sensors. So the system will have the actuators, which will allow it to interact with the world, and the sensors, which will allow it to see and feel the world. So examples of the physical part could be robots or autonomous vehicles. And then the AI part refers to the AI model. So this is the part that helps the system, like a robot or self-driving car, make decisions in the world. So together, this is what we call a physical AI. So let's take a concrete example. Let's say we have the spot robot from Boston Dynamics and we throw in some AI model perception or navigation model that allows it to navigate the world autonomously. Then this system is what we can call a physical AI system. So for the AI model, there could be a lot of different types. So the first one is computer vision models. So this could be things like YOLO, which allows a robot to identify different objects that it sees. We have end-to-end -end model, which is something like the Tesla, which uses that, like the FSD. So this is used to drive the car autonomously using only video data. We also have reinforcement learning. So this could be, you know, having a robot in a gym learning how to walk, for example. So all of these types of AI models could be on a physical AI system. So a big limitation in AI models is the data. So the typical workflow of AI models is you're going to have some custom data and this custom data will feed into your AI model, typically a pre-trained AI model. And the output is some new AI model that's going to be trained. So this new AI model is typically something that could be defined by some weights based off of the training process. So the idea is you take this real-time data, so you have a robot using this new model. It's going to have this real data feed into this AI model that was trained, and then the robot is going to take some action based off of what the model tells it to do. So the problem is the custom data which you provide to your model is typically only a very small portion of the optimal data. So by optimal data, I mean typically for a model to perform as well as you'd like, you need to have sufficient range of data covering all the different corner cases that you want your model to handle. So to get all of this data is significantly challenging. That's why, for example, the FSD for Tesla is still not quite as supervised self-driving yet because of some of the data and limitations in their training. So it's not a very simple task, but with Cosmos World Foundation model, what they're trying to do is to bridge this gap. And how are they gonna do this? They do this by taking some custom data, feeding into the World Foundation model, and this is gonna help add on to our optimal data set. So we have some real data that we're working with, but the World Foundation model is gonna give us a bunch of simulated data that's gonna look very close to the real world data that will help the further training process to improve the model. So once you do that, you could take that model and deploy it in a real world, and it should ideally perform in all the corner cases that we wanted to handle. So at this point, you might be wondering, what is World Foundation Model? Oftentimes, you're going to see the acronym WFM to represent World Foundation Model. So you could generate your own world models by fine-tuning them. So here I have World Model 1, World Model 2, and World Model N. So you could create as many as you want by fine-tuning. The idea is you could get your own world model for the very specific use case that you like to do. So you can think of these world models as a digital twin of your real world. So the idea is you could do a lot of different experiments and test cases without having to actually run your robot or car in the actual world and still gather the data. So there's two main types of world foundation models. The first one is diffusion and the second one is autoregressive. So here you can see that the diffusion model, the main thing that these type of models do is they take a text description as the input 
And the output is a video of 121 frames. So these specific ones are the 7 billion text to world model and the 14 billion text to world model. Now there's another group of diffusion models, the 7B video to world and 14B video to world. These diffusion models take in two inputs. They could take in text description and the image of the first frame. And the output is going to be video of 120 frames. So the next group of models are the Cosmo 1.0 auto regressive 4B and 12B models. These take video frames as the input. There's going to be nine frames and the output is going to be video of 121 frames. There's also an option for the same model to also take in the image of the first frame as the input and the output is the 32 frames of the video. The next type of autoregressive model is the 5B and 13B video to world models. So these take in two inputs, text description and video, nine frames, and the output is going to be a video with 24 frames. Another option is instead use the image of the first frame and the output is still going to be the same. So here's a summary of all the Cosmos 1.0 models that I talked about, both the diffusion, text to world, video to world, and the auto regressive and video to world versions. So here's the architecture of the diffusion model. So you start off on the bottom with the input video. This goes into the encoder of Cosmos 1.0 tokenizer. So this turns the video into tokens. At the same time, you're gonna inject some Gaussian noise. So this Gaussian noise is the core of how diffusion models work. The tokens get corrupted, it gets passed into this 3D patchify. And then once that happens, you have the absolute position embedding and 3D rope that gets part of the self-attention block here. That goes into a cross-attention and the input text prompt is gonna be encoded and passed into the cross-attention. Finally, it passes through an MLP, then it gets denoised. Once it gets denoised, it's going to go back into a decoder and we get a reconstructed video. So here's the architecture of the autoregressive now. So the way the autoregressive works is very similar to the diffusion model. There's a few slight differences. One is you see there's no longer a Gaussian noise block that gets added in. And here instead we're using a vocabulary embedding, which is kind of similar to how LLMs like ChatGPT works. You can see the center part of this with the self-attention, cross-attention, and MLP stays the same. Up here, we also have a text encoder for the input text prompt. The bottom is also the same. We have the absolute positional embedding and 3D rope. And then finally, everything gets passed out to tokens and goes into the decoder to get our reconstructed video down at the bottom. So at this point, you might be thinking, okay, so the World Foundation model takes text to video, and we also have things like video generation models like Sora, which also takes text to video. So what exactly is the difference between the two? I would say the main difference between the two is that the emphasis on physical and spatial understanding. And they do this by the specific training data that they've selected to train their model, which allows their model to have a better physical understanding of the world. So what exactly is Cosmos? So NVIDIA calls their framework Cosmos, which is the thing that allows you to run world foundation models. But in addition to that, there's other components to it. So things like the video tokenizer, we have the guardrail safety, which will make sure that your input prompt is safe and the output videos are safe. We also have some pre-training scripts. So this is good if you want to create your own world foundation models. There's also post-training scripts that uses the Nemo framework. So this is what allows you to actually train your world foundation model to get your custom world. And then there's like video creation, which allows you to select the exact videos that you need with specific filtering. So all of these parts put together is what NVIDIA calls Cosmos. So there's a lot of future potential applications of Cosmos. We could do things like policy initialization, policy evaluation, and policy training. All of these things that involve policy are related to things like reinforcement learning. And similarly with things like imitation learning, we also have applications like planning, synthetic data generation, and MPC, which is model predictive control. So things like this are great for robotics and autonomous vehicles. 
So go ahead and check it out. So hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, give a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.